between Tuesday, April 19th to Monday, April 25th, our PCR test positivity ranged from 23.4 to 30.6%, with an average of 25.7% for the week. This is stable from the previous week. As the Minister mentioned, hospitalizations have increased slightly. Currently, there are 1,220 people with COVID-19 in hospital, including 47 in the ICU. Sadly, between April 19th and April 25th, an average of nine deaths per day related to COVID-19 were reported to Alberta Health. By comparison, U.S. data estimates that prior to COVID, there was an average of one death per day per two million people for influenza and RSV combined, which would work out to about two to three deaths per day in Alberta on average. Clearly, COVID is still something we need to be very mindful of. The individuals who de whose deaths were reported in the last week were between the ages of 32 and 103. My deepest sympathies are with their loved ones and anyone in Alberta who has lost someone they cared about, no matter the cause. I think the most likely scenario is that uh, we will, as a, as a population, continue to be exposed to COVID virus. It will uh, likely be more prevalent in the fall and winter months when we typically see respiratory viruses circulate more, just like influenza has for many, many years. Uh, what we don't know, of course, is the impact that viral evolution will have and how new variants of concern might interact with our population. So there remain unknowns about COVID, uh, but ultimately what we have seen, especially with the past couple of waves, is that, again, vaccines are incredibly effective at minimizing severe outcomes and that as we go forward, we'll need to continue to uh, monitor the evidence about not only the effectiveness of our current vaccines, but whether there are new products that might be able to help us um, with additional um, protection and uh, whether there's new therapeutics that can also help people with early treatment. So there will continue to be changes and updates to evidence as we go along. Uh, but the, the bottom line is that I think all of us will need to think about if we're in a time where COVID transmission is high, what are our risks and how do we protect ourselves? And then if we're in a time where COVID transmission is low, that may be the time where those who have risk factors are able to do more without adding those layers of protection. So we need to be able to, um, I guess, flex our, uh, our response based on what our current environment is. It's an important question and whether it's attending one of these games or whether it's uh, attending other events in our communities, it's really important to look at the information that's available online to determine what the current level of transmission is. So people can look at wastewater data for different communities that's available at the University of Calgary site as well as a summary that's available on our government website. Uh, you can look at the geographic weekly updates to just get a sense of what is transmission like at a given moment in time. We know right now that transmission while plateauing is still at a high level and so it's really important for people who might be attending to consider what precautions would be appropriate for them, for their uh, risk factors um, and, you know, again, trying to think through what uh, their exposure might be. And it's important for the people who are supporting the fans uh, to be considering that there may be people who have higher risk, who want to still attend. Um, and so if there uh, is a, an opportunity to be able to support those people, that would be very important to do so. While COVID admissions are not driving the same capacity challenges in previous waves, our hospitals remain under significant pressures. Several of our largest sites in Edmonton and in Calgary are over 100% occupancy and emergency departments and EMS are under real strain. Now it's not new and it's not unique to Alberta. The reality is that two years of COVID-19 is straining healthcare services in every provinces, including here. If you just look at the numbers on paper, the fact is we've seen these kind of strains before. You'll, you can look at the data from five years ago under the previous government, 10 years ago, 30 years ago. The reality is that hospitals in Canada historically run at 90% occupancy and higher, especially in the big cities, and at peak times they run over 
What we have not seen before is two years of continuous pressure and stress on the workforce from the pandemic, including those workers who are sick with COVID. So we need to add capacity. We need to get through the current surge of COVID cases, but we also need to do more than just get back to normal. 